Chapter 1 Introduction to Sustainable Living Sustainable living is all about reducing our carbon footprint and taking care of the environment we live in. It's a lifestyle choice that can help us live happier, healthier lives while also preserving our planet for future generations. Many people worry that living sustainably means giving up the things they love, but it doesn't have to be that way. In fact, Sustainable living can enhance your lifestyle by encouraging you to make healthier choices and live in a way that aligns with your values. When you reduce your carbon footprint, you're doing your part to minimize the impact of climate change. This means using less energy, consuming fewer resources, and producing less waste. By doing these things, you're helping to create a cleaner, healthier environment for yourself and others. But sustainable living goes beyond just environmental concerns. It's also about living a more intentional, meaningful life. By focusing on what's truly important, you can reduce stress, increase your happiness, and improve your overall well-being. For many people, sustainable living starts with small changes. Maybe you start taking the bus to work instead of driving, or you make a conscious effort to buy products made from environmentally friendly materials. These may seem like small steps, but they can have a big impact over time. As you become more comfortable with sustainable living, you may find yourself making more significant changes. Perhaps you decide to invest in a hybrid car or install solar panels on your home. These changes may require more effort and financial resources, but they can also provide significant benefits in terms of cost savings and environmental impact. Living sustainably isn't always easy, and there will be times when it requires sacrifice. But it's important to remember that the benefits of sustainable living are far-reaching and impactful, both for us as individuals and for the world around us. If you're considering embracing a sustainable lifestyle, start by educating yourself about the issues and the choices you can make. Talk to others who are already living sustainably and learn from their experiences. And most importantly, don't be afraid to start small and take it one step at a time. Every positive change you make can have a ripple effect on the world, and together, we can make a difference in creating a more sustainable future. Question, what is sustainable living? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 2, The Benefits of Sustainable Living As Sarah walked down the street, she noticed the air was thick with smog and the garbage piled up on the sidewalks. She had always been concerned about the environmental impact of human actions, but now more than ever, she felt a sense of urgency. After doing some research, Sarah began to implement small changes in her life to live a more sustainable lifestyle. She started taking public transportation to work, brought her own reusable bags to the grocery store, and used a refillable water bottle instead of buying plastic ones. At first, it was challenging to break old habits. But as time went on, Sarah noticed that she felt healthier and more energized. She began to enjoy walking or biking to work instead of being stuck in traffic, and cooking at home instead of eating out filled her with pride. In addition to improving her health, Sarah also noticed cost savings. By reducing her energy usage and water consumption, her monthly bills decreased significantly. She was now able to save money and put it towards things she truly valued. As Sarah continued to learn about sustainable living, she made more significant changes in her life. She switched to using natural cleaning products, which not only benefited the environment, but also improved the air quality inside her home. She even started growing her own herbs and vegetables, which not only saved her money, but also ensured that she was eating fresh, organic produce. Sarah realized that sustainable living wasn't just about saving the planet, but also about creating a better quality of life for herself. 
she felt more connected to her community and the environment around her. She even formed a group with her neighbors to clean up the community park and plant more trees. The group's efforts paid off, and the community park became a beautiful, lush oasis in the middle of the city. The air felt fresher, and families and children spent more time outside enjoying nature. One day, Sarah was walking in the park when she bumped into an old friend she hadn't seen in years. Her friend noticed how healthy and happy she looked and asked what she had been doing differently. Sarah explained her journey towards sustainable living, and her friend was intrigued. Over the next few weeks, Sarah's friend started making small changes in her own life. She started bringing her own bags to the grocery store and using a refillable water bottle. She even started biking to work and noticed how much more energized she felt. Sarah's friend realized that sustainable living wasn't as difficult as she had thought and the benefits were worth the effort. She too began to feel a sense of pride and fulfillment knowing that she was doing her part to preserve the planet and improve her own well-being. Sarah was overjoyed to see her friend embrace sustainable living. She knew that every positive change, no matter how small, could make a tremendous impact on our environment and future generations. Question, what are the advantages of sustainable living? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 3, Energy Efficiency in the Home It was a cold winter evening and Jack was relaxing on his couch, scrolling through his phone. Suddenly, he caught sight of his energy consumption bill and his eyes popped out of their sockets. The total amount left him in a state of shock. He realized that he needed to make some changes in his home to reduce his energy consumption. After some online research and consultation with friends, Jack decided to invest in some LED lights. He replaced all the old, energy hotting bulbs in his house with the newer, power-saving ones. He was amazed at the transformation. Every room in his house was now brightly illuminated and the warm, yellow lights were more soothing than the old, harsh white ones. Encouraged by the success of the LED lights, Jack decided to invest in a programmable thermostat. He installed it in his living room and programmed it to switch off when he was not at home. With its unique sensor technology, the thermostat automatically adjusted the temperature according to his daily routine, ensuring that Jack wasn't wasting energy heating or cooling an empty home. However, Jack realized that energy loss could also happen through tiny leaks in his home. He conducted an inspection of every corner of his house and was amazed by how many places air was escaping. His doors and windows did not completely seal when closed and there were slight gaps around his electrical outlets. Determined to fix this, Jack invested in some weather stripping and caulking. He carefully sealed all the leaks, ensuring that his home was properly insulated and no warm or cool air was escaping. A few weeks later, Jack received his next energy bill and he could hardly believe his eyes. His new LED lights had lowered his electricity costs significantly. The programmable thermostat had reduced his heating costs by as much as 10%. The sealing of his leaks had further reduced his gas bills and had also allowed him to maintain comfortable temperatures throughout the house. He felt a sense of pride knowing that his small actions had made a significant impact on his energy consumption and carbon footprint. Jack was amazed at how just a few simple changes could make such a big difference. He began to share his experiences with his friends and family, encouraging them to switch to LED lights, install programmable thermostats, and seal their home leaks. They too saw a substantial decrease in their energy bills, and it made Jack feel delighted to know that he was contributing to a better future for the planet. As Jack sat on his couch, basking in the warm light of his new LED bulbs, he realized that sustainable living was not only easy to achieve, but also cost-effective. 
He was glad that he had taken the first step towards energy, efficiency, and sustainable living in his home. Question, how can I make my home more energy efficient? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 4, Sustainable Transportation The traffic congestion in the city had reached its peak. Cars were crammed bumper to bumper on the roads, and the air was polluted with exhaust fumes. Despite the chaos, Max was determined to find a way to commute sustainably. He wanted to do his part to reduce carbon emissions, and he knew there had to be a better way to navigate the city. Max began to explore alternative modes of transportation. He ditched his car and started biking to work. At first, it was challenging. His legs would ache and he would arrive at work sweaty and out of breath. But as time went by, he built up his stamina, and the daily commute became an invigorating exercise routine. On days when he needed a slower pace, Max walked to work. It gave him time to appreciate his surroundings and clear his mind before starting the day. Walking also afforded him the opportunity to interact with his neighbors, observe the local environment, and make new connections. When the weather was bad, or he needed to travel longer distances, Max took advantage of the city's efficient public transportation system. He purchased a reusable transit card, which allowed him to conveniently and affordably travel to all corners of the city. He found that public transportation was a great way to catch up on reading, reply to emails, or just relax. Max also discovered the benefits of carpooling. He started to seek out neighbors and colleagues who lived close to him and shared the same route to work. Together, they traveled in one vehicle, saving money on gas and reducing their combined carbon footprint. Plus, it gave them an opportunity to socialize and share their daily experiences. Max felt energized by his sustainable choices. He knew that his small actions would have a positive impact on the environment and his community. He was proud to be part of a movement that encouraged people to adopt sustainable transportation practices. Max's example inspired his colleagues and friends. Soon, they too were walking, biking, taking public transportation and carpooling. They formed a sustainable transportation community, sharing tips and information on the best routes and methods to reduce emissions. One day, Max's boss approached him with an unexpected offer. He was impressed by Max's sustainability efforts and wanted to introduce a new program that would reward employees who adopted sustainable transportation practices. Max was thrilled and accepted the challenge to lead the initiative. He worked closely with his colleagues to promote sustainable lifestyles, and the results were impressive. The company's carbon footprint was significantly reduced, employee health improved, and the company saved on transportation costs. Max was thrilled with the success of the program. Sustainable transportation became part of the company's ethos, and it spread beyond the office walls into the wider community. More and more people adopted sustainable transportation practices, and the city's air quality improved, as did the quality of life in general. Max's determination to find a better way to commute had a significant impact on his life, his community, and the environment. By choosing sustainable transportation, Max had not only improved his well-being and that of those around him, but he also contributed to building a greener, cleaner, and more sustainable future for generations to come. Question, what are some sustainable transportation options? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 5, Eco-Friendly Food Choices Mary had always been passionate about the environment and making eco-friendly choices in her daily life. Recently, she had become particularly interested in making sustainable choices when it came to food. She started to research how she could make a difference through the food choices she made. One of the first things she discovered was the importance of buying locally sourced produce. She found a farmer's market in her area where she could buy fresh fruits 
and vegetables directly from farmers who lived nearby. Mary loved knowing exactly where her food came from and loved supporting local farmers. Next, Mary learned about the importance of choosing organic produce whenever possible. She had always been aware of the harmful effects of pesticides on the environment and human health, but this took her awareness to a whole new level. She discovered that by choosing organic, she was supporting farming practices that were better for the environment, soil, and water. Mary also decided to start reducing her meat consumption. She had always been a meat lover, but with the knowledge of the environmental impact of industrial livestock farming, she found herself rethinking her choices. She began to substitute meat with more plant-based options like lentils, chickpeas, and tofu. She found this change in her diet to be not only more sustainable, but also healthier for her body. While Mary had always enjoyed cooking, she found herself having to learn some new techniques and recipes in order to incorporate more locally sourced and organic produce into her meals. She started to explore cookbooks with sustainable recipes and experiment with new ingredients. As Mary continued to make sustainable choices, she noticed that her friends and family began to take notice of what she was doing. They often asked her questions about her food choices, and Mary was always happy to share what she had learned. She even started to organize local events to share her knowledge on the importance of making eco-friendly food choices in order to reach more people and create a bigger impact in her community. Buying locally sourced and organic produce and reducing meat consumption became a way of life for Mary. She felt good about the impact she was making on the environment and her health, and she was proud to be a part of a growing movement focused on sustainable living. As Mary sat down to a delicious plant-based dinner made with locally sourced organic ingredients, she felt grateful for the knowledge she had gained and the impact she was making on the world. By making small changes in her daily life, she knew she was doing her part to create a cleaner, healthier, and more sustainable planet for us all. Question, why are some eco-friendly food choices? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 6, Waste Reduction and Recycling As a child, Daniel loved exploring the outdoors with his family. Their camping trips always involved hiking through forests and swimming in rivers. However, as he grew older, Daniel became more aware of the negative impact humans were having on the environment. He decided to make changes in his own life to reduce waste and live a more sustainable lifestyle. One of the first changes he made was to start composting. He had always enjoyed gardening and knew that composting would greatly benefit his plants. He began to collect food scraps and other organic materials like leaves and grass clippings in a bin in his backyard. Over time, the compost turned into a nutrient-rich soil that he used to plant his own organic fruits and vegetables. Daniel also began to use reusable bags whenever he went shopping. He had seen the negative impact of plastic bags on the environment and wanted to do his part to reduce waste. He purchased several reusable bags and made sure to bring them with him every time he went grocery shopping or ran errands. Recycling was another important part of Daniel's waste reduction efforts. He made sure to recycle all paper, glass, and plastic containers that he could. In his city, there were specific bins for each type of recyclable material, and Daniel made sure to sort his waste accordingly. Daniel also became more aware of the importance of properly disposing of hazardous materials. He learned about the negative impact of items like batteries and electronics on the environment if they were not disposed of properly. He made sure to properly dispose of these items at local collection centers. As Daniel made these changes in his own life, he began to see the impact he was making. He noticed that his trash output was significantly reduced, and he felt good about reducing his impact on the environment. 
However, Daniel realized that he was only one person, and he wanted to make a bigger impact. He started to talk to his friends and family about the importance of waste reduction and recycling. Many of them were interested in learning more and started to make changes in their own lives as well. Daniel also decided to get involved with his community and started attending local waste reduction and recycling events. He found like-minded individuals and organizations that were passionate about reducing waste and protecting the environment. Together, they organized community-wide cleanup events and recycling education programs. Through his efforts, Daniel inspired others to make changes in their own lives and communities. He saw the positive impact of collective action, and he knew that together they could make a difference in protecting the environment. As Daniel looked out at the beautiful outdoors, he felt grateful for the changes he had made in his life. He knew that by living a sustainable lifestyle and educating others, he could help protect the environment and the planet for future generations. Question, how can we reduce waste and recycle more? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 7, Green Home Design. Sophie had always been passionate about green home design and sustainability. Her love for nature and the environment had been ingrained in her since she was a little girl. Growing up, her family had always recycled and tried to reduce their environmental impact in any way they could. As she got older, Sophie became more and more interested in the concept of green home design and how it could be used to make homes more environmentally friendly. Sophie decided to pursue a degree in architecture with a focus on sustainable design. She learned about different building materials and methods that could be used to reduce a home's environmental impact. One of the things she learned was that a home's orientation and placement on the site could greatly affect its energy efficiency. By placing windows and doors in strategic locations, a home could take advantage of natural light and ventilation to reduce the need for artificial lighting and air conditioning. Another aspect of green home design that Sophie became passionate about was the use of sustainable materials. She learned about low VOC paint, bamboo flooring, and recycled materials that could be used in construction. She was also excited to learn about new technologies, such as solar panels and rainwater harvesting systems that could be used to make homes more self-sufficient. After finishing her studies, Sophie started her own design firm with a focus on green home design. She worked closely with her clients to understand their needs and desires and to design homes that were not only beautiful but also had a reduced environmental impact. She made use of passive solar design principles, energy efficient appliances, and carefully chosen building materials. She was thrilled to see the positive impact that her designs had on the environment and on her clients' lives. One of Sophie's most memorable projects was a home designed for a young family that wanted to live off the grid. They wanted a home that was self-sufficient and had a minimal impact on the environment. Sophie designed a home that was partially buried into the hillside taking advantage of the Earth's natural insulation to reduce energy usage. She incorporated rainwater harvesting and greywater reuse systems to reduce water usage and waste. The home was completely powered by solar panels, and any excess energy was stored in batteries for use during cloudy days. The family was thrilled with their new home and they love being able to live sustainably while still enjoying all the comforts of modern living. Sophie was proud of the work she had done in green home design. She knew that the homes she designed would have a lasting impact on the environment and on the lives of those who lived in them. She was also happy to see that more and more people were becoming interested in sustainable design and reducing their environmental impact. As she looked towards the future, Sophie was excited to continue designing beautiful and functional homes that were also environmentally friendly. Question, what is green home design? 
Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 8. Water Conservation Sophie had always been aware of the importance of water conservation and had incorporated it into her designs whenever possible. When she was tasked with designing a new home for a family in a drought-prone area, she knew that water conservation would be a crucial aspect of the project. Sophie started by installing low-flow fixtures throughout the home, including low-flow toilets and shower heads, which help reduce water usage without sacrificing performance. Next, she identified and fixed any leaks in the plumbing system, as even small leaks can waste a significant amount of water over time. One unique feature that Sophie included in the home was a rainwater collection system. The roof of the home was designed to funnel rainwater into large storage tanks, which could be used for watering the garden and flushing toilets. This not only reduced the family's reliance on municipal water, but also gave them access to a free source of water for non-potable uses. To further reduce water usage, Sophie incorporated drought-resistant landscaping into the design. This included native plants that were well adapted to the local climate and required minimal watering. The family also installed a drip irrigation system, which delivers water directly to the roots of plants, minimizing waste from evaporation and overspray. Sophie was thrilled with the finished design, and the family was delighted with their new home. They appreciated the environmental benefits of their water-saving features, as well as the financial savings from their reduced water bill. However, Sophie knew that conservation efforts could not stop there. She shared her knowledge with the family, advising them on simple changes they could make to their daily routine to continue conserving water. She reminded them to turn off the tap while brushing teeth, take shorter showers, and only run the dishwasher or washing machine when it was full. She also recommended having their plumbing system inspected regularly to identify and prevent any leaks that may arise in the future. Sophie's dedication to water conservation hadn't gone unnoticed, and she was soon approached by other clients who wanted to incorporate similar features into their own homes. Sophie was thrilled to see that her passion had become contagious and that more and more people were beginning to recognize the importance of water conservation. As Sophie continued to design and build sustainable homes, water conservation remained a critical element in her designs. She believed that every small change, from fixing leaks to installing low-flow fixtures, was an important step towards a more sustainable future. And with every project she completed, Sophie knew that she was contributing to a more environmentally responsible world. Question, how can we conserve water? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 9, Sustainable Travel Anna had always been an avid traveler, but as she learned more about the environmental impact of tourism, she began to question her passion for exploring new places. She had read about the problems caused by over-tourism and the negative impact it could have on local communities and fragile ecosystems. Anna knew she had to change her approach to travel if she wanted to continue exploring the world in a sustainable way. Anna began researching sustainable travel options, including eco-friendly accommodations, responsible tour operators, and low-carbon transportation. She learned about programs like carbon offsets, which could help mitigate the environmental impact of air travel. She also started looking for opportunities to support local communities by staying in locally owned accommodations and eating at local restaurants. On her next trip to Costa Rica, Anna put her new knowledge into practice. She stayed in an eco-lodge, that used solar power and rainwater harvesting to minimize its impact on the environment. She went on tours with local guides who were passionate about preserving the surrounding rainforest and wildlife. She even took a cooking class with a local family, learning how to prepare traditional dishes using local ingredients. Anna was thrilled to see the positive impact her choices had on local communities. 
by supporting local businesses and choosing sustainable travel options. She was helping to create jobs and support the local economy. She also knew that by minimizing her environmental impact, she was helping to preserve the natural beauty of the places she visited for future generations to enjoy. As she continued to travel in a sustainable way, Anna realized that sustainable travel wasn't just about reducing her environmental impact. It was also about living in harmony with local communities and cultures. When she visited a new place, she tried to learn as much as possible about the local customs and traditions, and to interact with locals in a respectful and meaningful way. She realized that by fostering cultural exchange and supporting local artisans and craftspeople, she was helping to promote a more diverse and equitable world. Anna's commitment to sustainable travel had a ripple effect. She shared her experiences with her friends and family, and they began to think more critically about the impact of their own travel choices. She started a blog about sustainable travel, sharing tips and insights with a wider audience, and she continued to seek out new ways to reduce her environmental impact while immersing herself in local cultures and supporting local communities. Anna knew that sustainable travel wasn't always easy or convenient, and that it would require ongoing effort to make a meaningful impact. But she also knew that the rewards were worth it, the chance to explore new places, connect with local communities, and leave a positive impact on the world. Question, what is sustainable travel? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 10, Community Action and Advocacy. The small town of Millfield was facing an environmental crisis. The local river was contaminated with industrial waste and the air quality was poor due to the nearby factories. The community had enough and decided it was time to take action. They formed a group of concerned citizens to advocate for green initiatives and demand action from their political representatives. The group started by conducting their own research, gathering information about the health impacts of the pollution and the potential solutions. They reached out to experts in the field and organized community meetings to raise awareness about the issue. Slowly but surely, they gained support from others in the town who shared their concerns. The next step was to bring their message to the political representatives. The group scheduled meetings with the local council members and state representatives to present their findings and demand action. They were persistent, showing up at every town hall and public forum to voice their concerns and hold their elected officials accountable. Their advocacy paid off. The town council and state representatives began to take notice of the group's efforts and started exploring options for reducing pollution and investing in green technologies. The community saw the beginnings of change as new regulations were implemented and factories were required to reduce their emissions. The group didn't stop there. They continued to work tirelessly, organizing events like river cleanups and tree planting initiatives. They collaborated with local businesses and schools to promote environmental education and sustainability practices. The community was slowly transforming into a more eco-friendly place to live. The group's efforts eventually gained national attention, and they were invited to speak at a conference on community action and advocacy. They shared their story with other communities facing similar environmental issues, inspiring them to take action and demand change from their political representatives. As the years passed, the group of concerned citizens evolved into a nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting sustainability and environmental justice. They implemented green initiatives like community gardens, composting programs, and renewable energy projects. They continued to hold their political representatives accountable and their advocacy led to even more significant changes. The town of Millfield had become a model for other communities to follow. The once polluted river was now clean and the air quality had improved. The community was thriving and the organization had become a hub of environmental and social activity. 
The members of the group knew that their work was far from over, but they were proud of the progress they had made together. Looking back, they realized that it all started with a few concerned citizens who were willing to take action and demand change. They knew that anyone, regardless of their background or expertise, could make a difference if they were passionate and persistent enough. They had learned that community action and advocacy could transform not only their town but also the world. Question, how can we engage in community action and advocacy for sustainability? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 11, Embracing a Sustainable Lifestyle Sophie had always been interested in sustainability, but it wasn't until she took a class on the subject in college that she really began to understand its importance. The education she received sparked a passion in her that she didn't know existed. Once she learned about the environmental impact of the choices she made in her daily life, she knew she had to do something. Sophie began making conscious choices about her consumption habits. She started recycling, buying second-hand clothing, and switched to a vegetarian diet. She quickly realized how much easier it was to make these changes than she originally thought. It just took a little bit of effort and a desire to do better. However, Sophie quickly noticed that most of her friends and family were not as environmentally conscious as she was. She began to advocate for sustainable practices, talking to her friends and family about the impact their choices had on the environment. She even started a sustainability club at her school where she and other students could come together to learn about and advocate for eco-friendly practices. Sophie knew that education was key to creating a more sustainable world. She wanted to teach others about the importance of making conscious choices and advocate for sustainability in her community. She worked with local businesses to promote green initiatives and organized events to teach others about the impact of their choices. She knew that small changes could make a big difference if enough people made them. Slowly, but surely Sophie saw a shift in her community. More people began to understand the importance of sustainable living, and she saw more and more eco-friendly practices being integrated into local businesses. However, she knew that there was still so much work to be done. Sophie continued to advocate for sustainability, and her efforts paid off. She was invited to speak at a conference on environmental education, where she shared her story and inspired others to take action. She became a leader in the sustainability movement, working with other advocates from around the world to promote eco-friendly practices and advocate for policy changes. Sophie knew that the work of sustainability was never done. It required constant effort and vigilance. But she also knew that the impact of her actions could be enormous. She had seen firsthand how small changes could make a big difference, and she remained committed to educating others and advocating for a more sustainable world. In the end, Sophie learned that sustainability wasn't just about making choices that were good for the environment. It was about making choices that were good for all of us for our health, our communities, and our planet. And while it may seem like an uphill battle at times, Sophie knew that the slow, steady progress of education, advocacy, and conscious choices would ultimately lead to a better world for everyone. Question, how can we embrace a sustainable